So, uh, like a lot of evidence-based influencers, I'm getting a lot of questions about Andrew Huberman. He's very popular. He's exploding right now. He's a Stanford University neuroscience professor. What do I think about him? And um, two things. First of all, I never get that about any other um, exploding health influencer at all, ever. I never have gotten this many questions, anywhere near this many questions, this frequency of questions, except about Andrew Huberman, which is a big red flag. Second thing is, is my colleagues who are very familiar with some of his podcasts are all, and also he's blowing up on Instagram as well, uh, recently on Joe Rogan. Um, most of them have taken a, an extremely negative view about uh, uh, Dr. Huberman. Dr. Huberman is also a, a fan and friend of uh, David Sinclair, which is another massive red flag because uh, although, uh, well, I can't comment on Dr. Sinclair's scientific work. It's outside of my um, area of expertise and it's not an area that I um, am looking to become very well trained in. It's just a very esoteric, and at, at least to me, it's, it remains somewhat esoteric. I can't comment on that. Uh, at all. I can comment on his public appearances and on some of the claims he makes, um, say on GRE and other things, and um, Sinclair's real bad news as far as um, health misinformation is concerned. He's not a, a good a good player in that game. He, he oversells, overhypes, and um, maybe even uh, dangerous in some of the recommendations that he makes. They're not based on evidence. They're not based on a careful um, risk benefit analysis as established by randomized controlled trial evidence. So anybody who's a big friend, a good friend of David Sinclair has been with pretty substantial, um, uh, consistency, uh, has been, has turned out themselves to be a quack. So for all these kinds of reasons, I have a real dim opinion of, uh, Huberman, even though I haven't looked at many of his videos. One of the things though, is that a recent, um, I got a recent, uh, message from one of my friends who wanted me to look at one of the recent claims he made with, in, in a podcast with um, uh, blah, 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 the sleep guy, the um, Matthew Walker. And he wanted me to comment on some of the advertisements actually some of the things that Huberman was pushing his advertisements and I must say the advertisements that Huberman um, reads out during his podcast are quite uh, mm, they're quite glowing so his endorsements his testimonials his uh, lending his scientific um, um, endorsement to these various products is is, is almost unique in terms of how enthusiastic Dr. Huberman is. Uh, and in some respects, they're so strong. His endorsements are so strong. Many of the endorsements are strong, not just for these products, but for different individuals that it's another red flag for me. I, I, don't, I don't trust um, this sort of thing. Matt Walker's book has also been taken apart bit piece by piece um, on, on some blogs. Uh, many of the facts don't check out. So uh, it seems that Huberman's kind of part of a big circle of, of uh, recent, there's a recently growing circle of credentialized and institutional grifters. Um, one would be David Sinclair, another would be like Peter Atia, Huberman, Matt Walker, Rana Patrick, and there's a handful of others, all of which I think have gone on Jerry and all of them are cashing out on alternative health. Essentially, um, another issue uh, from what I've heard from Huberman is uh, his emphasis on mechanistic speculation. So he comes with a bunch of mechanisms. They're not tested in human trials. He suggests that they might be helpful for human health, or beneficial, and makes recommendations based on them. This is not the way that modern biomedical science works. It's not the way that biomedical researchers think about science. In fact, most of them laugh at such a preposterous way of going about thinking about and doing and making recommendations, except in certain specific circumstances in which it might be 
permissible, but uh, certainly not in broad-based recommendations to the public, and certainly not on new issues that have recently just been started to be, become explored in the scientific literature. So that's basically humor in a nutshell, and mechanistic speculation is the game of the day for you know all of the major health influencers, virtually without exception, you could say Rhonda Patrick, Peter Atia, Huberman, uh, but then we've also got even the lower level people, Asprey, Greenfield, um, Paul Saladino, Marxism, like basic um, Chris Kresser, Chris Masterjohn. It's without exception the case that uh, me mechanistic speculation and, and ignorance of and a lack of regard for the importance of testing things in a randomized control trial is uh, the uh, uh, modus operandi of uh, most of these health influencers. and to great detriment of the public health. I won't talk about that in any great detail in this particular video. What I'm gonna make, basically focus on is just this video I was talking about earlier that I got a DM about. Uh, basically the ad for, I think, Bel Campo, the beef. And I just wanna break down a few things about regenerative agriculture and some of the ridiculous, preposterous claims that, the, that um, Huberman is making. Huberman's obviously not a He's not an agriculture expert. He's not a nutrition expert. He's a professor of neuroscience and psychology. Or, sorry, that would be Matt Walker. But I know that Huberman is a, what is he? He's a professor of neuroscience, I believe, at, or at least, okay, um, researcher at, at the uh, Stanford University School of Medicine, but he is a, a neuroscientist. So in any case, it's not important, but he's not an expert in any of these areas so that might be one of the reasons he's messing up but even if he's messing up because he's not an expert he should be more humble about things he says because many things he says about um, nutrition are preposterous before I start my breakdown like another thing is like he'll talk about um, well let's just jump into the video and then if I get time I'll, I'll talk about that as well let's, uh, let's find a place where he starts talking about Bel Campo and we will discuss the different parts of that part of the podcast. Use the code Huberman at there checkout. Go. Today's episode is also brought to us by Bel Campo. Bel Campo is a regenerative farm in Northern California that raises organic, grass-fed, and finished certified humane meats. It's important just for background sake to point out that whenever somebody says such and such is a regenerative farm, your um, your your BS meter should should peak. It should hit red and you should ask yourself what do they mean by regenerative farm and are some of the claims that they're going to be making about this so-called regenerative farm legitimate because just like a lot of diet quackery and diet um, misinformation and health misinformation all sorts of different areas once you start down these uh, it somewhere between cutting edge and um, dubious uh, areas of agriculture regenerative agriculture you often get a lot of grandiose claims that uh, don't match the evidence base and are basically just there to generate excitement and make money. And uh, regenerative agriculture is one of those areas where you have to be very careful about what you're hearing and very careful about believing uh, claims about regenerative agriculture because it's extremely weak on evidence. Where there is evidence, often the, the grandiose claims are flatly contradicted and shown to be false. And uh, you should just be very mindful when you hear about regenerative agriculture, be very careful about what you're listening to. And I'm gonna continue on and with that context. I don't eat a lot of meat. I eat meat about once a day, but when I do, I make sure that it's high quality and both humanely and sustainably raised. Conventionally raised animals are confined to feedlots and eat a diet of inflammatory grains. So inflammatory grains, that's a very interesting phrase. Grains can be inflammatory in <clears throat> livestock, especially if the transition to eating a grain-heavy diet is done very rapidly or if too many grains are given at once. The natural diet of livestock is not grains, it is grass. Um, you know, just like what you would hear in any, you know, regenerative agriculture podcast or blog post, that part is correct. Um, but there's nothing intrinsically inflammatory about grains. The small randomized control trials, the, uh, well, we do have a substantial number, but I'm uh, more and more skeptical even about uh, the randomized control trial literature and nutrition. But the evidence that we do have strongly suggests 
that grains are actually anti-inflammatory in humans. And it's important to point that out because often in these sort of alternative health circles that have a paleo diet bias, <clears throat> in my impression, so far at listening to Dr. Huberman is he tends to go in that direction. Uh, they will often say that grains are inflammatory. We never, that is not in fact the case in humans. There's nothing intrinsically inflammatory about grains, although they may be, and they are in many cases in livestock. But Belcampo's animals graze on open pastures and seasonal grasses, resulting in meat that's higher in nutrients and healthy fats. And I've talked many times before on this podcast about how getting sufficient levels of omega-3s is very important for metabolic health, hormone health, mood, essentially all aspects of one's health. Belcampo meats have high levels of omega-3s because of the grasses they feed. It's really important to emphasize that this is a long, um, a long repeated bit of misinformation about grass-fed meat. Grass-fed meat fatty acid composition is actually incredibly similar to grain-fed meat fatty acid composition. Um, it's virtually identical. There is a slightly greater amount of omega-3 fatty acids in um, grass-fed meat compared to grain-fed meat. Uh, it's not substantial. It's not clinically significant. It's not going to be amount that uh, has any uh, relevance to human health whatsoever, even if it's greater. And the reason for that is that grain-fed meat and uh, grass-fed meat, I mean beef in particular, is very deficient in omega-3 fatty acids. So even if you say get a 50% increase in omega-3 fatty acids in uh, grass-fed versus grain-fed meat, and I don't even think it's that high, uh, you're still going from almost zero to, again, almost zero. There's almost no omega-3 fatty acids in uh, grass-fed meat. And if you're looking for omega-3 fatty acids, grass-fed meat is not gonna be the place that will help you to find them. Cool, so now that we've established that, that's kind of a myth that he's telling. Uh, it's uh, not uh, uh, good information. It's misinformation about grass-fed meat. Grass-fed meat is nutritionally extremely similar to grain-fed meat, and that is a fact. Let's continue. The way Belcampo raises its animals isn't just better for our health. It also has a positive impact on the environment. They practice regenerative agriculture, which means that their meat is climate positive and carbon negative. So he says that... Uh, Grass-fed agriculture, regenerative grass-fed agriculture is uh, climate, po climate positive, carbon negative. The studies that have looked at some of the massively overhyped regenerative grazing uh, operations, the white oak, white oak pastures, they had a uh, very comprehensive study done on their operation, which showed that contrary to what Paul Saladino would say about it, it's not a net sequester uh, not means it's not a means of net sequestration of carbon from the atmosphere. It's not going to reverse global warming as somebody like Paul or um, uh, Alan Savory would suggest. Alan Savory is not considered credible by virtually anybody in the scientific community. Of course, neither is Paul Saladino because, again, this is not based on evidence. It's contradicted. It's contradicted by evidence. There is no regenerative agricultural op operation that has been studied so far that has been carbon negative. Bel Campo has never shown that it's carbon negative. Uh, to show it would be carbon negative would be an incredible achievement because that's never been shown. It's simply a theoretical thing that many people in the regenerative agricultural community often promote on the basis not of evidence, but on the basis of speculation, hope, hype. So this is the same sort of thing that he's promoting here. It's false, it's misinformation. Uh, white oak pastures, just like Belcampo, they're all carbon positive. That means they are net emitters of carbon to the environment, unlike, unlike natural uh, ruminant uh, carbon cycles would be. All we know is that regenerative agriculture makes things a little bit better. It makes, le it makes meat production less environmentally um, harmful but it doesn't make it help, uh, beneficial as uh, Dr. Huberman is claiming. He, this is again misinformation about the, the meat that you're eating. There's very little beef in the world uh, that is produced entirely environmentally innocuously. And certainly uh, it is, there's no evidence that the uh, meat at Belcampo is. And every time such a thing is claimed, it's always been shown to be false uh, when you actually look at the evidence. So uh, it's almost certainly false in the case of Belcampo as well. 
and certainly Huberman doesn't have any evidence to support the claim he's making. So it's probably the case that this meat is environmentally negative. Uh, you might like it. The omega-3s are not beneficial, and uh, the fatty acid composition of beef in general is, is quite negative and, and probably harmful for cardiovascular health. But let's continue and see if we've got anything else. It's good for you, and it's good for the environment. You can order Belcampo Sustainably Raised Meats to be delivered to you using my code Huberman by going to belcampo.com slash Huberman. And if you do that, you'll get 20% off your first order. I'm a big fan of their keto meatballs. I also really like their boneless ribeyes. I eat those pretty much once a day. Again, that's Huberman for the code, and it's belcampo.com slash Huberman for 20% off your order. And so that's that. Um... It's very disappointing to have Huberman join the uh, the rest of the cadre of academically affiliated credentialized grifters. Um, in the future, I'll be discussing more about Huberman, more about Hyman, Tia, Esselstein, Walker, uh, Sinclair, all of the academically affiliated grifters who are basically exploiting their um, academic credentials and their affiliations they're essentially monetizing their affiliations and uh, making a huge amount of money. So Dr. Huberman is uh, becoming a very wealthy man, uh, but scientists should have integrity and in, uh, what he's doing with this podcast and what he's doing here in Belcampo, but we could probably just go on and on and we will, uh, we will go on and on. Uh, it's, it's shameful and I feel really bad about it. And uh, um yeah, we'll do some more debunkings as we get some time. I got to uh, take care of a uh, plant-based uh, YouTube uh, discussion over the next couple of days, and then we'll start hitting up uh, these guys again. Uh, you know, the academic, the academic uh, health grifters. So, thanks for watching and comment, like the video, share it. Peace.